Yeah, man. Welcome to the Frick Cast. Today, we're re-ranking every Dr. Squatch brick. There's been a lot of changes and new releases since we last did this, and an update to the rankings is long overdue. Today we'll be ranking not only 48 bars, but combining both OGs and Limiteds into one tier list. Now, if you're wondering where the Avenger bricks are, they won't be in this video, as I want to update the rankings before them, so that way when we do the soap guides, I can add them to the tier list at the end of each video. So check those out if you're wanting to see their rankings. But we still have a lot of bricks today, so let's get slamming. We'll begin with the bottom tier, the... Oh, oh god! Oh god! Ah! Ah! This is reserved for only bars that I hate, or that I feel are objectively poorly made. But thankfully, there's not many here. Let's kick things off at 48 with the Cedar Citrus. The only OG to get discontinued, and it wasn't surprising. The Cedar Citrus was always a very lackluster bar with some real issues, especially in the scent department. A nice Cedar Citrus smell sounds nice, but that's not what you got with this brick. Instead, it was just a cedar wood smell, and a really weak one at that. The bar has some nice ingredients, including some of my favorites in rosemary oil and peppermint oil, but they just couldn't salvage this bar either. Never understood why Squatch always marketed this bar more than some other better ones, but I guess it was to try and boost its sales. At 47 is the Dark Side Scrub. Another bar with potential, and one that works on paper, but something just went wrong when they actually made it. This is the Darth Vader boy from the first Star Wars collection, and having ingredients like black chokeberry and sand for a heavy grit, as well as a charred, smoky scent, all sound perfect for Vader. Unfortunately, the heavy grit is practically non-existent. The Wisdom Wash, as a zero grit bar, actually has more grit than this brick, and that charred, smoky scent is not there as well. It's so weak, all you're smelling is the cardboard box. I know a lot of people like this bar, and there may be some good batches out there, but I've tried it numerous times over the years, and I've never gotten a decent one. At 46 is the Cold Brew Cleanse. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that I just don't care for this bar. Really, its only issue, and it's a big one, is the coffee grounds. They give the bar a heavy grit, a little rough for my liking, but the reason it's bottom tier is because they make an absolute mess. They don't dissolve, and they trash the shower. Other than that, I really like the scent of the Cold Brew Cleanse, and I love the use of liquid coffee. I think it is a bar with a lot of potential, but in its current state, it's pretty much unusable. At 45 is a bar that pains me to put it this low, but I have to. It's the Bao Chicka Wow Wow. This was one of my highest ranked limiteds, in the god tier for a very long time. So what happened? How could it fall so drastically? Well, the recent batch happened, replacing a delicious chocolate-covered strawberry scent with a putrid one. Just disgusting chocolate, and sometimes a hint of artificial strawberry. It's a pretty nasty scent, honestly, and I got a lot of bars from that batch, and all had issues. The bar still has some things going for it, like the unique ingredients. I've always thought the use of aphrodisiacs was clever for a Valentine's Day brick, and I always like when a bar has alcohol in it, in this case, red wine. And those once helped form a really great bar, but now it's very lackluster. I hope that this one can get redeemed and get back to its former glory. But for now, I guess I'll be content with Sudsy's getting lucky. At 44 is the Chalky Milk. The Balchika Wow Wow has actually given me a newfound appreciation for the Chalky Boy. Somewhat. I still don't think it's a great bar, but I no longer consider it the worst of the worst. I think the whole Chalky Milk theme is kind of funny. I like that they were willing to try something like this. The chocolate scent isn't the best. It's not really refreshing at all. But I mean, we are talking about a chocolate bar. You also got ingredients like cocoa nibs and cocoa powder to really double down on the chalky vibe, which is cool and all, but doesn't make for a great bar. We've now reached the quite a height tier. Now these are bars that I feel aren't bad, I'd say they're solid. Maybe mediocre in the grand scheme of Squatch, but they're a height, just very quickly outshined. Remember, Squatch has a lot more good bars than bad, so some are just going to be lower ranked. At 43 is the Gold Moss. Now this is what I consider like a bare bones Squatch bar. If you stripped everything unique from a brick, you're left with the gold moss. There are no unique ingredients, and the scent is a weaker, sweet, earthy one. Not bad, but hardly one that stands out. It's not a bad bar, but I think it's one of the most forgettable, because it really just is a basic brick. At 42 is the Bay Rum. This is in the same boat as the gold moss. It has no unique ingredients. In fact, they are the only two like that. 
What the bay rum does have though over the gold moss is a very nice scent. A Caribbean spiced one with notes of cinnamon and cloves. It's a classic flavor for a reason, but in terms of use it's one of the weakest cleaning bars on the menu. I love the bay rum flavor, but I prefer it in non-soap form. At 41 is the Alpine Sage. This is a bar that's kind of fallen for me. It was once an OG that I really liked, but I find myself pretty much avoiding it now. I think the biggest issue I have with it is the scent. It's an intense lavender smell that's very perfumey. I find it a little too much, but I wouldn't say it's a bad scent. You have some nice ingredients like cypress, clary sage, and lavender oils, but I would still say it's one of the weaker bars cleaning-wise. It definitely has a place on the Squatch menu, just not so much in my shower. At 40 is the Eucalyptus Greek Yogurt. I find this bar solid, but it's one I have a hard time picking over pretty much every other bar. It's a eucalyptus scent, so kind of an earthy, herbal, medicinal smell. It's not one of my favorites, I'm not the biggest fan of eucalyptus, but I appreciate it being an option. The Greek yogurt is a great addition, one of the better ingredients, and I like the oatmeal-based grit. Although the last few times I tried this bar, the oatmeal was practically non-existent. I forgot it was even in the bar, and the brick overall felt kind of standard. Not really the deep clean I was expecting, given the ingredients. At 39 is the Energy Bar. This is a more recent release, part of the Boosted Bricks duo, and it's the morning counterpart. The bar has a lot of things going for it, a strong scent, and a good lineup of ingredients. But personally, I'm just not that high on it. The scent is a citrus one, mostly orange, but I find it a little artificial smelling. It's not very refreshing like some other citrus scents on the menu. The unique ingredient of Sunroot is a really nice addition, and I like the heavier grit of the garnet powder. The bar feels pretty good to use. I don't like how much it bleeds though. The reddish pigment really comes off of this bar. At 38 is the Freedom Fresh. I really want to like this bar. I love the 4th of July theme and I love the box design, but it's just a weak brick overall. I mean, for an American boy, you're expecting a powerful scent, but instead it's a pretty weak one. It is nice though, sort of a breezy beach smell, but nothing spectacular. The unique ingredient of red root tea is nice, and has some origins in the American Revolution, which is cool, but I feel like this bar just needs more. The latest release was certainly an improvement, and I liked it much better, but I just can't really put it that high on this list. At 37 is the Moon Rock, our lowest ranked of the famed Galaxy Bundle. Now this is one of the coolest bricks you'll ever see. I love the whole moon theme, and I love the look of the bar. However, I really don't enjoy using this brick that much. The heavy pumice-based grit is a little rough for my liking, but I appreciate that it exists. I think you need heavy grit bars like this, and I think ingredients like moonflower oil make for a solid bar. The scent, though, is one of the weakest. It's one of just a few bars I have that have lost their scent pretty quickly. It's mostly a clean floral scent that I think was decent enough and fit the outer space vibe. I just find this bar a little gimmicky, and while I'm glad it exists, I don't find myself using it that often. At 36 is the Spearmint Basil. We go from one of the weakest scents to one of the most potent. Now this may be a bit low, but it's another OG that I tend to avoid. It has arguably the strongest scent on this list, a powerful spearmint scent. And I certainly won't complain about a potent scent, but the smell of this bar I just really don't like. It smells too much like chewing gum for my liking. You've got spearmint, peppermint, and basil oil as unique ingredients, all great. And the bar does feel pretty good to use, it's very fresh. I love mint in most things, but this is just a brick I really don't like all that much. At 35 is the Summer Citrus, the OG that replaced the Cedar Citrus. And judging by its ranking, you can probably tell I think it's a noticeable improvement, but still not a top tier bar. This is more of a lemon scent, I'd say more so like a lemon dessert than the actual fruit, but it's still a nice, clean, refreshing scent. I also like the light pumice grit. It's not quite one of the best OGs, nor one of the best citrus bars, but it is decent. At 34 is the Resistance Rinse. This is the Ray Brick from the second Star Wars collection. This bar has kind of grown on me, but it is still easily the weakest from the second collection, which I feel was very strong overall. It's more of a floral scent. Not bad. One of the better floral bars on the menu if that is your thing. I personally though don't care for it all that much. It's also a light grit bar, but in actuality it's basically zero. I like ingredients like Resurrection Flower. It's one of the cooler ingredients out there. I think it is a solid bar, and one I'd recommend to lady squatchers. At 33 is the Only Hope Soap. This is the Obi-Wan brick from the first Star Wars collection. I wish I liked this bar more than I do, and I know a lot of people have this one highly ranked, but like the Dark Side Scrub, I've never really seen that much appeal with it. It mostly feels like a basic brick, although I would say it's much better than the Gold Moss. Bentonite clay and thyme leaf powder are solid ingredients, and thyme is the main scent here, so a nice herbal smell. 
which I always like, although it is one of the weaker ones. Overall it is decent, but this is about as high as I can rank it. We're now at the This Brick Be Bussin tier, a new addition to the tier list. These are bars that I would say are very good. They're maybe just held back by a couple things that would otherwise make them great. At 32 is the Spidey Suds. This is the Spider-Man collab. Before the Avenger Boys, this was our Marvel brick, and I think it was a solid one. It's mostly a musky berry scent that I find can be both refreshing but also off-putting at times, depending on what notes you get. I like the berry. We don't have much berry scented bars from Squatch, and I like the muskiness adding a uniqueness to it as well. It's a combo that works well enough, although the bar does have a tendency to smell somewhat like a body wash. Ingredients like red spiderling and silk are also creative, and a poppy seed based grit all result in an above average clean. Overall, I think it's a good bar, but not a personal favorite. At 31 is the Ruthless Rents. This is the Darth Maul boy from the first Star Wars collection, and compared to those we've already discussed, I think it does a much better job of fitting its theme, and of standing out as a unique bar. It's got this fruity, spicy scent, and it's got a nice sand-based grit, as well as dragon fruit powder to add to the ingredients. The bar just looks the part. It looks evil, and I think it works well, although I think it is one of those bricks that's a little gimmicky, but I mean, it's a Darth Maul soap bar. It's supposed to be fun. At 30 is the Stone IPA, a collab with Stone Brewing. Now, I want to rank this bar higher, but like the Moon Rock, it's held back by a weak scent that disappears quickly from the bar. It was something of a lemongrass scent, with Stone IPA beer, hops, and menthol as unique ingredients. All very nifty. One of the better trios. This is a bar that really needs a re-release, as I'd like to experience it again in all its glory, because it's a brick that just hasn't aged well on the shelf. At 29 is the Area 51 brick, the second bar from the Galaxy Bundle. I think I'm still underrating this brick, but it's not quite one of my favorites. I think the whole desert theme with the cactus scent fits the whole Area 51 vibe. I'm not sure this bar actually has sand in it, as it's a very smooth brick, but the prickly pear is a nice touch. The bar smells refreshing and earthy, and cleans pretty deep. It kind of feels more like an OG than a limited, but I still appreciate this bar. At 28 is the Bliss Brick, the nighttime counterpart of the Boosted Bricks duo. I like this bar a lot more than the Energy Bar, mainly because I just love the Sleepy Time vibe, and the box design is one of my all-time favorites. The scent is nothing spectacular, but it's solid. Mostly an earthy, medicinal, mineral smell. Kind of like some sort of aromatherapy or something. It's meant to help you relax, and I think it does that well enough. The scent I'd say is decent overall. I like the ingredients here too, of date seed powder and gamma aminobutyric acid. They're nice additions. At 27 is the Irish Cream and Whiskey. This is, of course, the St. Patrick's Day Limited. This is a bar I really like. Now, I know the most recent release was a downgrade from the traditional version, but I actually didn't order this time, mainly because of how bad the Bao Chica Wow Wow was a month before, and because they were doing that 10th anniversary nonsense, so I didn't even frick with it. If I had gotten it, it'd maybe be a few spots lower, but with my memory of it untainted, I think this is a fair spot. I really like the creamy mocha scent, although it is a bit weaker, and I love the unique ingredients. It's pretty stacked with stout beer, reishi mushroom, oat milk, Irish moss, and potato water. It all makes for a really nice bar, one of the best feeling zero grits out there. At 26 is the King of the Bricks, the T-Rex boy from the Jurassic Park collab. I think this is a very underrated bar, that in a vacuum would be one of the better ones. Of course, what holds it back is its scent. Not that it's bad by any means, but that it's very similar to the Batman brick, although it does differ slightly and better fits the T-Rex. It's an earthy scent, very manly and musky, but also fresh. It's also quite strong. I actually like it a lot. I love the ingredients too, dino themed ones like amber powder, fossil powder, sawtooth oak, dragon's blood, and yellow rhyolite for a heavier grit. At 25 is the Raptor Rush, the Raptor Boy from the Jurassic Park collab. I consider both the Jurassic Bricks pretty equal and pretty underrated. Like the King of the Bricks, this is another strong scented, fresh, earthy scent. However, its main notes are melon, making it have fruity undertones. I think it's a more unique scent than the T-Rex Boy, and that's why I have it slightly higher. Again, I love the dino ingredients here. We're talking dinosaur plant, or resurrection flower, as well as fossil powder, and one of my favorites, Dino Egg Melon. It's another fun bar. I don't think this duo deserved the hate it got. At 24 is the Black Hole, 
This is another bar from the Galaxy Bundle. Like the Irish Cream and Whiskey, I think the most recent release got a formula change. However, according to you guys, it's actually for the better. I didn't try the newest release, but I always liked this bar, so if I had, it'd maybe be even higher. It's a very strong peach tea scent in my opinion, and the bar has a nice feel to it. It's very sleek, that is except for the apricot stone grit, which feels nice, and the black tea is also good in this bar. It's another really cool looking brick, it's hard not to like it. At 23 is the Pine Tar. Now this may be a little low for such a storied OG. This is Squatch's flagship, but I actually don't think it's still one of their best bars. We are talking a nice pine scent, very clean and very manly. It's an intimidating bar with a heavy oatmeal and sand grit, but also a deep cleaning one with Pine Tar. There's a reason it's so popular. I have had though some issues with recent versions of this bar. I had one brick that was unusable. It actually smelled like toxic and looked like oil when you used it. I think I just got a really bad batch. But from what I've seen online, a lot of people think this bar has gone downhill in quality. I need to try it again to get a more accurate feel of it. But for now, I think this is a fair spot. We've reached the rather nifty tier. These are great bars. I wouldn't even say they do anything wrong. They're just not quite top tier. At 22, we're going to start with the Grapefruit IPA. I think this is a very underrated bar and has one of the best fruity scents on the menu. It's a delicious grapefruit scent with a slight hint of hops. It's got beer and hops as unique ingredients as well, which I always appreciate. It's really carried by that refreshing scent though, which makes it a perfect summertime bar. I think it is slightly held back by a more average clean, as it's not quite the deepest cleaning. Still though, it's a bar that I like a lot. At 21 is the Riddler Enigma. This is the Riddler counterpart of the Batman bundle. One of the most powerful scents, and it is a refreshing green apple one. Like the Grapefruit IPA, it's definitely carried by that fresh, fruity scent, but I do think this bar feels better to use. It's got some nice ingredients like mugwort, and is overall a really refreshing brick to use, and it even has a light amount of grit to it. At 20 is the Free Solo Scrub, one of the most recent releases, this time with rock climber Alex Honnold. This was something of a return to form for Squatch, going back to their more outdoorsy roots. The bar works well for the most part, it's a fresh outdoorsy scent, but also kind of like a sporty body wash type of scent. I like describing it as the woodsy version of the Fresh Falls. It smells good, not quite one of my favorites, but I was glad to see it released. Ingredients like Douglas fir and watercress, as well as a rhyolite based grit, make for a great wash in the shower as well. At 19 is the Spartan Scrub. This is the Master Chief Boy from the Halo Infinite collab. A pretty polarizing bar, but I like it quite a bit. It's definitely not for everybody, but it's certainly unique. It has a metallic scent, like a weapon forge. It kind of smells like a wood shop or something. It's one of the more manly scents, for sure, but some may not find it all that pleasant. It also gets the job done in the shower as well, with a nice medium grit and halo themed ingredients like seven bark root. Overall, it is a very unique bar. At 18 is the Frosty Peppermint. This is one of the Christmas boys. This bar will always hold a special place in my heart, but I don't think it's one of the best bricks. I love the whole peppermint candy aesthetic. It looks like a peppermint candy and smells like a peppermint candy. It has peppermint oil and one of my favorite ingredients, menthol, adding a nice chilling sensation when you use it. And the menthol I think is what really carries here. It's not one of the deepest cleaning and the bar kind of has a chalky texture to it, but I love the scent and I love the menthol. At 17 is the Cool Fresh Aloe. Now I love this bar, and I think it should maybe be higher, but I had a hard time putting it above some others. This is actually the first bar I ever used, and it's always remained a favorite of mine. Aloe Vera is one of the best ingredients out there, and make this one of the most moisturizing and deepest cleaning bars on the menu. The scent is also nice, it's a sweet earthy one, best described as a rainy spring morning. I kind of prefer the original Cool Fresh Aloe scent, it was more sour, but I like this one a lot too. At 16 is the Werewolf Wash. This is the first of the Halloween bricks today, and although it is the last ranked of the trio, I still love it. It's a strong cologne scent, it kind of smells like cola, and it has a nice grit via forget-me-not seeds, as well as some interesting werewolf ingredients like orange eye and black wolfberry. It's a bar that just feels great to use, honestly. The whole beastly vibe of the brick has really grown on me. At 15 is the Suds of Darkness. This is the Kylo Ren bar from the second Star Wars collection. Now despite having that bitch boy on the box, this is one of the manliest bricks on the menu. 
especially the scent, which is another strong, cologne one, one with like some wet, rocky undertones. I like this bar a lot, and it's got a nice rhyolite-based grit, too. At 14 is the Sinister Scrub. This is the Emperor Palpatine bar from the second Star Wars collection. It's the strongest scent from that bundle, and it's a fruity, berry, jam scent. It's really sweet, but also a bar that you just want to bite into. I love this brick, and I love its heavy, black currency-based grit. It's a surprisingly deep cleaning bar that just excels in a lot of ways. Like the Suds of Darkness, though, it doesn't quite fit its theme. And if it was perhaps some other theme or even an OG, I think it'd be more highly regarded. At 13 is the Legendary Lather. This is the Luke Skywalker boy from the second Star Wars collection. I have a hard time ranking this Star Wars trio, as I really like all three, and as such, I consider them all pretty equal. The Luke boy has a really peaceful scent. It's pretty much grass, but it smells clean and fresh. It's just a very chill bar. Five figure grass and other ingredients also make for a solid zero grit clean. We've now reached the something else entirely tier. These I would consider top bars, honestly. They're basically perfect. I don't think I would change anything about them. At 12 is the Mars Bar. This is the last of the Galaxy Bundle, and I think it's easily the best. It's fallen a bit for me, but I think this is a better place for it, as it's kind of gimmicky, but still an amazing bar. I love the red hot cinnamon scent. I think it fits Mars so well, and I love the ingredients too, like pumice for grit, as well as MSM sulfur and volcanic ash. It all just perfectly fits the red, volcanic planet of Mars. And although it's mostly a fun bar, it's still a great one to use as well. The scent is awesome, and the bar feels great. One of the better medium grits on the menu. At 11 is the Crypto Cleanse. This is the crypto-themed limited, and as such has ingredients like Cryptomeria Fortuna. However, it's carried by a powerful banana scent. It's one of the best out there, honestly. It makes the bar feel really refreshing to use with an underrated lather and some grit, making it a deeper cleaning bar as well. That banana mint scent though is just awesome. We're now at the top 10 with the Wood Barrel Bourbon. This is a fan favorite and I do like it a lot. What keeps it out of God tier for me though is that it's kind of a lesser version of the Drunken Pumpkin, which, spoiler alert, we'll be talking about soon. Its scent of course was derived from the Drunken Pumpkin, although they are definitely not the same. It's a cologne scent that really just smells like fall, with some oak, some spice, and a lot of warmth. It has a good medium grit thanks to sand and shimmy red corn, and a solid clean thanks to ingredients like brewer's yeast. It is a bar though that I would consider scent based more than anything, and in that regard it's one of the best. At 9 is the Coconut Castaway, another bar that has fallen a little bit, but still one I really enjoy, and easily one of the best OGs. It's a pina colada scent that's always great, but it's also one of the most moisturizing and deep cleaning bars on the menu. It's all about the coconut here, coconut milk, coconut water, and coconut shreds for a lighter grit that is very effective but not rough at all. It all makes the bar feel very unique compared to every other one, and has a nice milky lather to it. It's one of the more unique OGs on this list. At 8 is the Snowy Pine Tar. It is the second Christmas Limited. I'd say it's the best woodsy scent Squatch has, and probably the most natural smelling. It also beats the tar out of the OG pine tar. It's a much more fresh, natural pine scent than its big brother, and while it doesn't have the heavy grit, it does have pine tar and balsam fir, making for another deep clean. It kind of feels more like an OG than a limited, but if you want an outdoorsy scent that smells like a straight up pine tree, then this is your brick. At 7 is the Wisdom Wash. This is the Yoda Boy from the first Star Wars collection, and our highest ranked Star Wars bar. This brick just really works. I don't know exactly what it is, but I just love it. It has one unique ingredient, lotus leaf, but it does a lot of heavy lifting. It makes it one of the most hydrating and deep cleaning bars, and even adds a little bit of light grit. The scent though is really why it's so high. It's something of a citrus herbal scent with some notes of lime. It's maybe the most refreshing bar on the entire menu. At 6 is the Fresh Falls. This is another flagship flavor from Squatch, one of the best bricks and scents. It's a really nice looking bar with a deep blue color that just really helps capture that pure Alaskan water vibe. It's going for that fresh waterfall scent, and I think it accomplishes that, although it is something of a sporty scent, like something you may see in a body wash. In any case, it is one of the best scents Squatch offers. It's also pretty deep cleaning. It's a smooth bar with Alaskan Glacier Mineral Clay, making for a nifty shower experience. It's just a really satisfying brick. We've now reached our final tier, the might be some sort of god tier. 
These are bars that are not only perfect, but somehow go above and beyond. These are also our top 5 bricks, and I feel pretty confident in that. At 5 is the Drunken Pumpkin, another Halloween boy and a fan favorite. I think it's a better version of the Wood Barrel Bourbon scent-wise, ingredients-wise, and of course, theme-wise. After all, it is a spooky boy. However, that false spiced cologne scent with a pumpkin edge is just one of the best out there. It's also got ingredients like pumpkin seed oil for an underrated clean. I really wish this bar got a re-release. Even after all these years, the bricks I still have are going strong. At 4 is the Birchwood Breeze. This is a personal favorite of mine. I just love everything about this bar. It's kind of a similar scent to the Woodbrell Bourbon and Drunken Pumpkin, in that it's more of a cologne smell that just really embodies fall. However, its main notes are vanilla and birch, making for a very sweet smell but with some breeziness and woodsiness to make it a unique scent. It's also a solid, medium pumice-based grit, with some birch bark for a deeper clean, and it's also got a nice, creamy lather. Just an all-around nifty bar. At 3 is the Batman Brick. Of course, the Batman counterpart of the Batman collection. It doesn't get any more manly than this bar. We're talking that battle-worn leather scent with some notes of pepper and musk, but it's basically just a straight-up leather scent that somehow really works here. It of course fits Batman perfectly, but it's also just a great scent. It's got some grit and great ingredients like St. John's Wort, making a bar capable of even cleaning the Dark Knight after a night of fighting criminal scum. At 2 is the Brick of the Dead, the last of the Halloween boys. This bar is just spooky. It smells like a haunted graveyard. It's kind of an earthy vanilla scent, but it really just captures that Halloween vibe perfectly. It's such an amazing scent. The bar also feels great to use with gravel root and ground vanilla vine, giving it a nice medium grit. Really though, just the whole spooky aesthetic of this bar makes it one of the best of all time. However, the title of greatest of all time can only go to the goat. That's right, the deep sea goat smoke. This OG has always been my favorite, and I see no reason to drop it now. It's pretty much carried by goat's milk, one of the most beneficial ingredients out there. This gives it not only the thickest lather of a brick, but the deepest clean of one as well, one that leaves your skin moisturized and nourished. It also has some oatmeal for some added grit. The scent though can hold its own as well, a salty sea foam scent that is very underrated. It's just a clean, simple, nifty bar. And there you have it mains, an updated ranking of all Dr. Squatch bricks. These are just my opinions though, and now I'd love to hear yours in the comments. What do you think of my list? How would you rank these bars? As always Frick Nation, stay nifty. Yeah, oh man!